I'm Sasha Cord, North Houston Public Media, and we're here as part of PBS's Black Church special program during Black History Month. We're doing a local series of our own called Keeping the Faith, the Black Church in Houston, where we're talking to some of the city's influential faith leaders. Here with us today is Bishop James Dixon, who leads the Community of Faith Church. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Sasha. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for the opportunity. So as I understand it, the Community of Faith Church has quite a history spanning almost 150 years, not to mention it even runs in the family. Yes, of course. I am uh, privileged and humbled beyond expression, Sasha, to uh, be a part of the church that was founded in 1873, founded by a former slave himself, uh, the Reverend Jack uh, Yates. Uh, Jack Yates was actually uh, from uh, Gloucester County in Virginia. And after being emancipated, he became an educator, founded the first uh, school for, for Blacks, ex-slaves here in the Houston area, and founded Freedmanstown, uh, the first settlement where uh, ex-slaves were allowed to live, which is now a portion of Houston's downtown. Uh, that's the uh, DNA of, of our church. And as you mentioned, uh, my family's been speaking this church for, for some time. My, Paternal grandfather, the late Reverend C.D. Dixon, uh, pastored our church from 1927 to 1978, actually uh, uh, 50 plus years, a little over 50 years. My father is still with us today. He's 80 years old, and he's a, a ministering elder on our staff, along with my sisters. And so it's been now uh, since 1981, so almost 39 years. Uh, I spent all of my life uh, as, a, as a young adult and uh, into adulthood uh, serving in ministry. Through the decades, Black churches have played a role in social justice and trying to bring about social change, which includes their role in the civil rights movement. This summer, there was a lot more talk of social unrest because of what happened to George Floyd. How is your church trying to address these type of conversations? The George Floyd incident certainly was one that fueled our flame uh, to a higher level, but I must be. I must say honestly that the Community of Faith Church has been on the on on the front lines of social justice uh, for for decades. I think it's important for people to understand that the, that the that the role of the Black Church and the preaching of the Black Church is always not only referred to spiritual liberation from the power of sin, but also our physical and our the liberation of our humanity, the dignifying of our sacred humanity and essence based on biblical teachings that were not taught uh, to ex-slaves for the most part by those who maintained the plantation. And then you move into the 1900s and the founding of organizations like the NAACP that was steep in the black church has always been the citadel and the vanguard of black community, black family and black community and social life. And uh, so uh, black educational institutions, all of those, for the most part, have their grounding and their founding in the heart and soul of the Black church. And that is why it's amazing when you look at the civil rights movement and connect that to the NWCP's founding, you're going to see Black preachers, Black uh, church leaders always at the forefront. There would not be a Black America that's made America great and the world great without what the Black church has meant to Black America and therefore to America and the world. It's just an amazing story that very seldom gets told in a way that does it justice. And that's why I think this conversation that PBS is having is so instrumental. One of the reasons why we're taping this interview like this is because we're in the middle of a pandemic, but it's not just about physical health issues. There's also mental health, not to mention there's been economic instability with people out of jobs. How is your church in particular trying to weather all these issues and keep up that sense of hope? Preaching is uh, bringing theology to life in living color. And so you have to deal with the realities of the contemporary context. The context we're in right now, of course, is we've got a, a major, major social upheaval going on in our country. And at the same time, we're hit by COVID. And, uh, and we know that COVID has exposed, uh, again for us, the vastness of health disparities uh, within the African American community. Uh, we're underinsured. And uh, of course, uh, we are, you know, we suffer from so many underlying health conditions. Keeping people to, people's hope alive uh, in this environment has required uh, preaching the sovereignty of God, one that God providentially has a purpose that will prevail ultimately. And our faith and our trust 
has to be in him. Two, we've inspired and instructed people to make safe decisions, safe life choices, uh, that are part of exercising our faith is not being foolish, uh, going about without masks and without, without carrying out destructive or social distancing. We've got to help God to take care of us. Uh, but mainly, keeping people inspired and encouraged is a major challenge uh, because every day we're surrounded by the realities of people dying uh, in our families and, and our, in our homes, uh, in our churches, and, and people, of course, as you mentioned, have lost jobs. So how do you keep people believing and keep people hopeful and help them to maintain sanity and emotional strength? There is always God. And uh, uh, Hank Neal, who's going to be with the Lord now, wrote a song that says, as long as there's God, there is hope. I am excited about what the Black church's future is. When we look at uh, the ingenuity of the millennials and the generation X and Zs, Zs who are now on the scene, understanding because they see what's happening in our cultural context that that is the, not only the reality of the Black church, but the relevance of the Black church and the resourcefulness of the Black church. I think that this uh, crisis has served to bring our minds back together, reconnecting generations in a conversation that says, because of what the Black church has always been and is, it needs to always be. And we thank God for the brightest and the, the brightness and the brilliance of the next generation who will carry this institution into the future, fighting the good fight, making America a better place for all of us to live.